dear everyone, uh, wherever you are, whenever you are, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, happy times, happy nights, happy morning. Uh, tonight is the night of the new year, and we're facing the evening of the new year. I hope the new year day will be at the beginning of prosperous uh, life for all of us, especially for the underprivileged in different parts of the world. And uh, I hope that we end uh the new year the last year which is 2022 in a better shape and don't be engaged in unlawful and haram activities especially at midnight midnight will be starting in different parts of the world soon it has already started in australia japan and china and i think in this in the in the far east and should be starting in the mid of the world and the west and the far west. Anyway, today is my fifth lecture of my fifth year to talk about my end of the year account. My end of the year account. I will start it, we started in 2018. To put this uh, accountability on any public figure, any public figure, any individual who are dealing, who is dealing with people, dealing with public fund, dealing with community, dealing with all these kind of problems affecting humanity. Especially nowadays, we have plenty of them. Particularly, the people who are so calling themselves humanitarian workers or social worker or political worker, politician, we have to submit our end of year account or every three months account and we should make ourselves accountable to the community. For myself, I have to make this statement and say, we are the byproduct of our communities, whether it's in, the, in Europe, whether it's in America, it's in Australia, in Canada, in Latin America, in Africa, in Asia, wherever we are, we are the byproduct of our community. We have to be extremely transparent and put our account before them to judge our performance and to see what we have achieved for them. Not only that, we are the byproduct of the poor and the needy, of their agony. Somebody like myself was learning a lot from the suffering of the people in Sudan, in Pakistan, in Somalia in Bangladesh, in Afghanistan. So when I rise high, or when somebody elevated me, we have to remember who is behind the success story of any one of us. Are the poor, the needy, the displaced, the refugees, the victims of war, and the raped women and girls in different parts of the world, the orphans, and the widows. So this is to remind all of us, it is not something that we do it voluntarily. If you are in the social or humanitarian work, you, anybody in the community, any citizen, no matter who is here, who is she, have to ask you the question and you must become accountable to them whether you are the president of the organization, the chairman of the organization, the CEO of the organization, the director, you have to be answerable to everyone and anyone, even if you are a volunteer. The people who are paid by the poor and the sick people, 
like ourselves, have to be more accountable to them. More accountable to them. And this was the teaching, and this is the teaching of Muhammad وسلم, who taught us to be very transparent to everyone and anyone if we are going to become public, fig public figures. This is why I'm presenting my account to you every year. Every year, and this is my fifth year. And I hope that others will do the same and be accountable before they make themselves accountable to Allah, to be accountable to the community, to the needy, to the poor, to the displaced people. This is number one. If I go to the index of my talk today, I've got nine points on the Zoom. First of all, advice was given to me from one of my uh, colleague, young colleague, is at least 20, 25 years younger than myself, always giving me advice. His name is Abdurrahman al Mutawa. He is from Kuwait and the deputy director of the International Islamic Charitable Organization in Kuwait, very active in trying to help two organizations. One of them called the Rahma International in Kuwait. The second one is the International Islamic Charitable Organization. He always used to tell me, as a young man, please, Abu Hassan, which is the name of my son, don't be humble and show humility to everyone. Because those people, will misunderstand you and they might step on your feet, ignore you and sideline you. There are certain people in our community, as he has said to me many times, and they respect his advice. He takes the advice from anybody, whether young or old, male or female, educated or non-educated, layman or professor or president, whatever it is. Being so humble and showing your humility to certain individuals in different communities will degrade your status, unfortunately. This is what he used to tell me, his first advice. But it's very difficult, brothers and sisters, that we deal with the poor and we don't show them humility. It's very difficult. I appreciated his advice, but I could not be able to follow it fully. The second point, advice from him, and the younger to me, the younger colleague to me, is he listened to my talk, one of my talks about the donkey ship, sex stage of life. And when I said donkey ship in my talk, he said, Hashak Allah, Abul Hassan, you cannot just put the donkey on your table. It's a matter of love and respect to the elderly. But I'm trying to widen the scope of the people to understand the value of the animal that Allah SWT created them to serve us. To work hard like a donkey. To be loyal to our community like a dog. As well. So amongst us, unfortunately, some of them cannot rise. Some of us cannot rise to the status of the hard-working donkey or the loyal dog to his society or to his master. But I have to thank my younger colleague of giving me all the time the good advice. Today, I will take you to a journey of the last 365 years. No, not years, sorry. Uh, days. <laughs> I'm still... Not 300 years yet, uh, which will take us to activities that we have done in 2022, in spite of the fact that we are two part time individual organization and one full time non paid individual. But we are doing whatever we can to maintain the activities and to bring the change to others. During 2022, we have done nearly 150 activities. We traveled for about nearly 78 days, visiting 15 countries and visiting 27 cities. And activities 
like articles, interviews, and others with about 53 and activity, as well as total number of activities during the travel was 60. During our travel, we have many, I can give my example. I think one of my colleague uh, is with me, Dr. Uh, Munaim uh, Daimi. When I was travel, no, it was not a group of Dr. Munaim Daimi, no, it was a group of Salah. When we were traveling to Kenya at the beginning of the year with about 15 young people, we started our activity on the plane to have group discussions about what we're going to do in Kenya, in Nairobi, in different cities. How are we going to talk to the people to behave? What's our output and outcome? Are we going to write what need to be written and to inform the community about our activities? And my dream, which came on the plane, is we should write a book. And each chapter should be written by one of the 15 individuals about their impression of the journey. So when you are on a plane, when you are in a car, when you are in a train, you are on a ship, you have to utilize the space and the time and keep discussing things with younger people to learn from them and to teach them. This is what we have been doing as a philosophy of thinking, whether when I went with an Inspire from Canada, but I want to thank people from Europe as well. So as I mentioned before, the number of tests, including flights by plane, cars. I remember having a very, very exciting discussion when I was traveling with my colleagues from Canada in Albania. And we were in tears because one of the brothers from Albania said, that people in Albania or people in Kosovo remember those individuals who came from Birmingham with a plane during the conference, the Kosovo conflict, to bring tents to us to Shkodra, second largest city of Albania, with about nearly a few hundred tents to create two camps in Shkodra. Still, 30 years after the conflict, 1999, nearly 23 years after the conflict, people still remember the plane which landed where nobody else was bringing a plane or aid to Albania at that time. But nearly 900,000 Kosovar moved from Kosovo to Albania at that time. That's how people can remember you. The number, total number of meetings, as we said, is about nearly 76 Zoom meetings. It's including board meetings, uh, meeting with employees, TV program, platforms, meeting with other international organizations such as UN agencies, uh, holding courses and lectures for others and being a part of discussion groups. Many, many activities we have managed to do at that time. These are the number of countries that I have visited, which is not as uh, much as before COVID. Qatar, Kenya, Ethiopia, Turkey, Iraq, Jordan, Ireland, Albania, Kosovo, Montenegro, Macedonia, Serbia, Bosnia, Switzerland, and Italy. And Italy. Let me in a car. comment the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, and twenty-seven cities. Not much. We should do more than that. Diversity in our program and the activities during the trips. Let me take you with what we have been doing. Whether I used to travel alone or to travel with different organizations like an Inspire program in Canada or like young volunteers and employees of Islamic Leaf 
in Europe, Italy, Sweden, Italy, uh, Spain, and Ireland. What we're doing there? Visiting different humanitarian and Islamic institutions. Visiting leaders to observe their achievement and learn from them. Talk at conferences. Interactive talks in the evening. Events organized by them. Friday khutbah as well in Arabic and English. Many lectures, workshops, TV interviews, meeting with leaders from Islamic institutions. Uh, holding public meetings, discussion group, small meetings with youth, listen to the youth problem and discussing their problems, actually, discussing their problems, train young people to speak and perform in public, building confidence in young people, urging young people to strive and think about the future continuously. Gathering with young people in sometimes picnics or barbecues. Building our future generation, which is my dream, in spite of the fact, as I said at the very beginning, we don't have the resources, but my dream up till now, since 2004, is to build the future generation or to be a part of the building process of the future generation. Because we will be we are accountable to the community and to Allah. And if we fail, if we fail, if we fail to build the future generation, we are failure. We are failure. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Future generation could be male and female as well. I made sure to travel with young people, live with them, and hold small and individual discussion with them to listen. Discussion on a plane, as I mentioned before. Discussion in a car, as I mentioned before. Discussion during breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Living and sharing bedrooms with young people. I remember one of the young CEO from Canada, his name is uh, Osama Khan. He, I traveled with him to Ethiopia for about four or five days. Then all of, both of us together with others traveled from Ethiopia to Mac, uh, Balkan to visit Albania, Kosovo, Macedonia, uh, Montenegro, and Serbia. And he, even after that, we attended uh, the International Assembly of Islamic League. So he was with me and I was with him for more than two weeks in the bedroom for two reasons. It's not the reason of saving money. It is the reason of having discussion. One could be alone and this discussion could be private or for public uh, 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 causes for more than two weeks. It's not only saving money. It is transferring knowledge. It is transferring knowledge, experience, and learning from the young people. The importance of diversity, of the diversifying the program and the activities with youth comes where we have to take into consideration the different personalities of different people thinking differently. Encourage them to engage in discussion during conferences. Don't let them to sit and listen only. One day they ask questions, second day they lead the discussion. Four, discover new talents. Because when you are with the young people during these trips, whether they're in Africa or Europe or Asia, you discover their talent. Poetry, 
singing, reciting, sports, writing, all these kind of things. Build trust and encourage the young people to feel that we are with them and a part of them. To, to, to close the gap between our generation and their generation. We have to do it with our children at home, with our wives, with our relatives, with our neighbors, and with our community individuals and with our uh, colleagues from the organization. We have to bridge this gap. This is, in general, our work with the youth, on travel with the youth. Let me go to one by one of the activities that have been done. We did six workshops over the last, since October to December for Syria. We thought that after 11 years, we have to pause and to discuss what's next for the humanitarian crisis in Syria. And from having no resources, Alhamdulillah, we started with one, but now we finished six of them. The first one started in Amman, Jordan, on the 4th of October. The second one started on the 9th of November uh, for Lebanon, the, the, the Syria in, Le in Lebanon. The third one was in Istanbul on 24th of November. The fifth one was in Ghazi Antab on 25th of November. And number six was in the number, uh, this is number four. Number fifth, number five was in uh, Rehaniya, uh, 26th of November. And number six, uh, was in uh, the hook on 14th of December. So our hope of organizing all this started with a small dream, in spite of the fact, as I mentioned before, that we don't have enough fund to run them, but it had been organized by the local organizations in Istanbul, in Ghazi Antab, in Rahaniya, in Dahuk, in Jordan, in Lebanon, as well as some funding from organizations such as UMR, such as Islamic Relief, such as Action for Humanity and others. Very, very small seed money, such as the Khair Foundation. But the impact of interviewing 180 organizations plus from a two and a half persons organization is going to be great, inshallah. We did not stop at that, but we are planning at the moment, as, as I speak with you now, to organize workshops in Istanbul for the young people, the Syrian, male and female, two. Inside Syria, two. One for the young people and one for the community. Third one, inshallah, should be with the elite of the community inside Syria, in the northwest of Syria. And also discussing to have another one for the diaspora in Europe, Canada, and USA, and the Middle East. If you have organizations are involved with Syrian organization, please forward for us their contact so we can involve them in this discussion. Because we need, at the end of this discussion, to produce a paper, to produce an outcome, to show the people what we need. The Syrians started to complain about the humanitarian response program organized by UN and by other organizations. Said we don't want food anymore. We want to be empowered, to be trained. 
want to build the economy, local economy. Want to build local municipality. But the fund is coming only for humanitarian response for 10 years and more. That's why we need to stop and pause and think and lobby. All right. These are some of the photographs. Can you bring back the slide? Please? Some of the photographs that we have done in Jordan, unfortunately, it only can be seen on the Zoom, which is the link is there. Uh, can you take this image out? Yes. And uh, the Lebanon one, the Istanbul, Razi Antab, Mahaniya, and also we are, I attended a very exciting, motivating conference about digital transformation. I was so happy to find nearly 150 or 200 people in this conference room for two days talking about digital transformation and its role in serving development and humanitarian work on 27th of November in Turkey. I thank the organizers because this is outside the box, thinking outside the box. And I hope that we can invest in this sector to enable us to be the leading organization in digital transformation as well. On the 10th of December, at the end of the year, before traveling to the hook, there was a show in a film festival of a film made about myself covering the first 20 years of my life. Ended with an open discussion, very frank and open discussion. This is the images of the whole consultation on the 14th of December. This is the visit to the Yazidi camp or the minority camps in the Hook, which have been tortured by ISIS, the Muslim, the Yazidi, and the Christian. Still having those camps in the Hook, and there's no much support given to them up to now because the UN ran out of funding. Also, we visited the Syrian Kurdish refugees camp in the Hook as well. Still have tens of thousands of Syrian Kurdish refugees crossed from Syria to the Kurdistan of Iraq. We visited some historic places as well there with the local community. Then we go with the young people to Italy, and this was inspired to Bosnia. It was very exciting, and if Munim is still uh, listening to me, I can see your image with the 15 young people in the cafeteria uh, in uh, Sarajevo at that time. Very exciting group, very motivating and motivated group. The image underneath it is the visit to Italy, Polonia. Actually, there was another visit as well to Kenya. As I mentioned, this another visit also was to Ethiopia, which I didn't, I couldn't be able to bring the photographs, but too many photographs as well. The visit to Ireland. And one of the young people talentedly recorded 28, 28 pieces for TikTok with me. And we're planning to attend the Islamic Week in Italy, so in Ireland at the time. Kosovo was very memorable visit. Actually, we met the orphans, the community leaders, the powerful young talented 
employees of Islamic Relief. Oh my God. You can't find them in Europe. Don't fool ourselves and say that we are American or we are Canadian or we are uh, European. You can't find them here. They have the spirit, the zeal, the power, the urge, the commitment, the dedication, and the vision. They don't have limit for their work. This is what we have found also when we traveled to Kenya. People during COVID used to work day in and day out, never stopped from 2020 till 2022. And up till now, Christian and Muslims. Even I keep mentioning uh, the story of Gloria, which I made a talk about her a few months ago, that she was fasting with us. And she told me we used to travel for 10 to 15 hours to deliver aid. Other brother said we were on the road for more than 24 hours. And here in Europe, here in Canada and America, we still are talking about social distances and work from home. Yucky. You will never be able to bring and build leadership if you work from home. Never. 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 Stop being lazy. Stop being putting yourself at the comfort zone. While the people are paying our salary, are dying, are suffering, are tortured, are living in tents, are living in community centers, have no shoes, have no food, have no clothes, new clothes, have no schools, have no clinics. And we are telling ourselves, pay rise, pay rise and work from home. Get lost. They are not a humanitarian or social worker. You have to rise to the standard of the people who are paying your salary. You know who are paying our salary? Are those sick, those orphans, those widows, those elderly, those in detention, those imprisoned, those homeless, those internally displaced people, those refugees are paying the salaries for the people who are sitting at the comfort home in Canada, in America, in Europe, and the other parts of the world. This is not humanitarian work. Don't take the excuse of the rising prices of fuel and energy, of fuel and food, and say, let us sit down at home and work. Doesn't work. It will not work. In Kosovo, we saw it. In Albania, we saw it as well. This is another image from Albania when we're visiting non Muslim orphans supported by one of the Muslim organizations. There is bridging the gap between Muslims and non Muslims in these countries, living together for hundreds of years. And we are in certain parts of the Muslim world. Theologically dividing the Muslim community into sects, schools of thoughts, unfortunately. It's Albania. The workers in Albania are nothing less than the workers in Kosovo. Great people. Montenegro and uh, the other one was, uh, yes, in Montenegro also, we visited projects supported by some Arab organization like Rahman Kuwait and IICO in Kuwait as well. All this kind of activities, visiting Serbia for a few hours after being at the border for nearly four hours. It was extremely cold, but the security, after stamping our passports, they have to keep us waiting for four hours before entering to meet our partners inside, actually, for a few hours and have dinner or, uh, or supper with them. Macedonia. 
Macedonia as well. Balkan is on hot plate. Is on boiling and the hot plate. We might see what we have seen between 1992 and 1995 in Bosnia. The war which started in 1991 between Serbia and Croatia, then Slovenia, then it involved Muslim in Bosnia after April 1992, and it claimed the lives of quarter a million people, 80% of them were Muslims from Bosnia. And the reports about the organized, systematic rape, which organized by the Serbian Chetnik, was some between 40,000 to 60,000. The youngest, which I have with the case study of here, was four. The eldest was 71. You can imagine systematic, organized. And we are here talking about rhetoric. The Balkan as a whole is in a hot plate. Pray with us that this will not erupt in another conflict, armed conflict between different parts in this area. They need help. Yeah, we have to help them now. We have to strategically to think about them. So when the war, if it broke, I hope, I pray for Allah, so never broke again. At least we have friends to support. Persheva, we we were actually, as I said, on the border for about four hours to stay with our colleague for a meeting for about two, three hours. And we came back again. This slide, which I'm showing, unfortunately, I will send you the, the Zoom uh, later on when we upload it on the YouTube. It talks about good news and bad news. I will start with the bad news. The bad news is, which I mentioned yesterday in the Arabic interview and in Arabic uh, lecture, same one. People used to go to you, to my to myself. Oh, you are great. You are. You are. You are. And they keep saying you are till the R becomes ours and we and whatever it is. They keep flattering extensively. We said, okay, fine, let us use this opportunity and change it into a program, into a paid program to support our organization. Because I said, the organization is very small. And we send them the cost of my travel with uh, their young people to train them. And we told them the number of hours that uh, somebody like myself will take maybe 12 to 14 hours every day. And we told them the discussion here and there, everybody was excited. Everybody was thrilled. Everybody was motivated. But when we told them about the cost of my time, they refused. Said we just to come pay you the ticket and the accommodation. What I said, it's not about it's not about myself, because all this money was supposed to be going to our little organization, which needs very very small amount of money to sustain it. Talking is an art, but doing is another art. Don't keep talking too much. Twice, one of those organizations let me down. And not let me, not let organization down. You know what is more sad, or more sad, is I was with one of my uh, so-called students who came to work with me, or I worked with him in Islamic Leaf in 1993. 
And I was asking him as a consultant, he became a consultant now, how much is your daily rate? He said, it's not daily rate. I take by the session. I told him, how much is your session? He said, 350 pounds. So how long is the session? He said, one and a half hours. This is how much they pay. The same organization who refused to pay for me. Not the same amount of money. Because we were asking them to pay directly to the organization to support its program. And they refused. But they pay more than that to other consultants. They pay more than that to VIP. Because they only oriented fundraising, program, program, and fundraising. Nobody is interested in passing the knowledge, the experience, the talent, the history to younger generation. They do not value this. And this is where we can fail again. We have got many people far more better than myself, but nobody is taking care of them to learn from their experience, to get the image of the scenes of what has been happening over the last 30 or 40 years, to interact in discussion. No, we're not interested in new people. And this is the trend of the young people. This is the sad uh, or the bad uh, news. The good news, alhamdulillah, we organized a very successful conference in Istanbul between 26 and 28 of July. Very well attended. Very well attended. But we did not discuss the traditional discussion, which is fundraising program, program fundraising, fundraising program. Enough is enough. Do something else. We wanted to discuss something else, like philosophy, like culture, like research, studies, like media, creating media, impact, like manners, like values, like history. For God's sake, you people, if you don't try the history of organization where people are still alive, you are going to be criminal before the future generation. You committed a big sin and big crime of not writing the history of your own organization while the people who made the history are still alive in different parts of the world. They don't want to invest in it. They don't want to leave legacies to the younger generation or the future generation because they're only... All, they're only interested in fundraising, fundraising, fundraising. So what are you going to do with the fund? You people. If you don't invest in building future generation, in creating philosophy of thinking and culture, all the money that we receive from donors is coated by culture. And inside it, is values, philosophy of thinking, and their belief. And we take it and we bring our back to it. It's the time now to make our culture, to put our values on the table, to create our own philosophy, and throughout our own history, and to build the future generation, our role models for us. Unfortunately, I was discussing with some of our colleagues the difference between us as Muslim organization and the Western organization. One of my colleagues and my friends called you Ian Egland, who was a, the, the, the special envoy to Syria and was the head of UN OCHA in the beginning, at the beginning of the two, two, uh, uh, 20s, two, two, the, this century. 2004 and five. His organization is still polishing him. He's a good man. But the organizations of ours destroying their icons. They don't actually make them 
or treat them like the people or the other Muslims are treating their own icons. And we have in our Muslim world a lot of icons, a lot of icons, but we dump them and we call them what? Arrogant. They won't talk about themselves. They won't write a book. Stupidity. When you give the leadership to an ignorant, stupid leader, that's what you get. So, but the good thing about it, this conference called the International Dimension of Humanitarian Work. And we are at the moment, which is another good news, collecting the data to produce a book, which for the first time will include the uh, academic material of sex talks and the practical involvement and the experience of 20 individuals to manage or to balance between the academia and the uh, operational experience. Not only this one, we are hoping that to produce after this marathon of Syrian workshops, to produce another book about Syria as a history, as a culture, as a great, play, a great regional player, suffering and others as a solution for the problem as well. If you have the fund, if you have the people who can help us in both, please contact us. Uh, this is some of the people who attended this conference like uh, from Istanbul was a uh, few organizations, Ata, Watan, and Dr. Hassan Bashir, uh, uh, Dr. Asad Taha, and uh, Leila Hassu, and others. Others, and for the first time, we found that 70 or 80 people in the room do not want to leave the room. They're staying from 9 o'clock till 6 o'clock in the evening. My message to thank people, to conclude, let our core message to the people at the end of 2022 is building hope amongst these difficult, contradicting, and conflicting challenges facing the whole world. Look at the most recent conflict in Ukraine, which led to the displacement of millions of people inside Ukraine and the movement of the refugees to the neighboring countries as well, millions of them. And we do not know what this war will bring to us. The least now we know that the prices of fuel and energy and food prices rocket high. But, but, and this was one of the statements made by one of the speakers in our conference, his name is Waddah Khamfar, who is to be the director of Al Jazeera. He said this could lead to the Third World War, which is going to be devastating. The second and first, we did not have nuclear capabilities, we have only maybe chemical sometimes, but the third, with the nuclear, it might vanish humanity. We're still discussing the forgotten crisis, young people. My, this is my message to you, young people, of the Ugor, Rohingya, and the people from Central African Republic, in an ethnic cleansing way, have been pushed out of their countries. The minorities in Kashmir, Muslim in Kashmir, and in India, Syria and Yemen. There's still internally displaced refugees in Iraq. The Eritrean refugees in Sudan have been there since the 70s. The issue of Palestine, and the issue of Gaza, the siege of Gaza. The 30 million people at the moment were affected by the flooding in Pakistan a few months ago. 
the famine or the drought in the east, the Horn of Africa, which includes Ethiopia, Somalia, Tanzania, Sudan, South Sudan, Djibouti as well, particularly nearly famine in Somalia because of the drought. The millions of people displaced inside the Democratic Republic of Congo. The 19 million Afghani citizens who are suffering from poverty and from undernourishment, lack of resources there, while we still keeping their money or freezing their money in Western banks, making difficulty, they have difficult for the organization working in Afghanistan up till now of having to spend or to uh, cash their money to spend on a humanitarian response team, removing all our embassies from Kabul to somewhere else in the region, And those people are still suffering for the last over 40 years of war from the Soviet Union time, started late 70s, till the American after 2002. But we still don't want to give them the money and don't want them to succeed in running their own country. Islamophobia, still suffering from Islamophobia. And war and terror as well. The de risking, which make the banking system is more powerful than the power of governments. And that's what we call it de risking. These challenges, young people, are enormous for small, medium-sized, and large organizations, as well as governments. But we will, I'm just promising you, be always raising the practical, applicable message of hope. Never lose hope. Because this is the only way forward for socio-humanitarian journey. Our socio-humanitarian journey. I mix both of them together. We will be working, even if we don't have resources. We will keep progressing, even if we have little provision. Be walking in the long road, facing challenges, and being attacked by others to prevent us from accomplishing our mission. To still be working. We are not going to lose hope. We will keep struggling, striving, Shoving against the enormous challenges, having the spirit of the young people, the determination of their souls, the fuel of their ideology, which will make life harder for the anti humanity corrupt so called government leaders or community leaders. Please, young people, don't be dismayed. Don't be dismayed. by what others are doing to you. Exaltedness here, young people, is in what? In the depth of your belief, the edge of your purposeful, motivated power, the clarity of your vision, the purity of your souls, the validity of your insight, the commitment of your actions, and can you remove this image, sister? Uh, bring it back, please. I say it again. Exaltedness here, young people, is in the depth. Can you remove the image, please? 
Exaltedness here, young people, is in the depth of your belief, the urge of your purposeful, motivated power, the clarity of your vision, the clarity of your vision, The clarity of your vision, the purity of your soul, the validity of your insights, the commitment of your action, and then before and after in your reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we can see at the end of 2022 is a new hope, having a new dawn for a long era of life. We have to bring this dawn to humanity. Fajr. We will announce in such a dawn or Fajr the announcement of freedom, justice, equality, rights, right based approach, community empowerment to build the future of our communities and nations. But who will build this? All these young people. It's young people like you. You are the hope for every ummah, every nation, every community, every community, every family, and every generation that will come after us to see, to see what? What people have been doing for humanity. What young people have been doing for humanity. Humanity needs you, because you are the future leaders of humanity. Who will build this journey? It's you, young people. You are the hope of every ummah, every nation, every community, every family, and every generation that will come after us to see what the young people have done, have been doing for humanity. We might stumble, but we will not be affected. But this will not affect us. We might be slowed down, but we'll never stop. We might become busy, but we'll never forget. We might have no sustenance, but the hearts of sustenance will move the conscious sentiment of nation. And this will be provided by you. I'll say this again. We might stumble, but this won't affect us. We might be slowed down, but we'll never stop. We might become busy, but we'll never forget. We might have no sustenance, but the heart sustenance will move conscious sentiment of nations. And we and all this will be provided by you young people. Can we move the cursor, please? Uh, dear young people, let the year 2023 be the year of prophecy or prophecies of announcement the new dawn of the new of the era of uh, of new era of life, dawn of new era of life. The announcement of an era of life where humanity will enjoy our natural humanity. You know what natural humanity means? Al insaniya al fitriya. Allati wada'aha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi fu'ad Adam alayhi salam. The natural humanity which has been put by Allah in the mind and the soul and the heart of Adam alayhi salam. This is what we call it natural humanity. The announcement of an era of life where humanity will enjoy our natural humanity. And humans will be happy to hear our footsteps at the symphony that they were waiting eagerly to listen to it. Please, young people, compose such a symphony. Even if you don't have the satisfactory solution for your communities. Compose it. The natural humanity, compose it. The natural humanity, compose it. The community building journey does not end in a day. 
era of time. One generation. It's a journey where different generations, one after one, will be a solid part of a successful completion. Let us work to make others happier. Let us stay up at night to ease the lives of our nations. Let us stand up to protect our countries. And let us live to satisfy Allah. We thank each and every one of you for showering your grace upon us. Thank you, young people. You and us will always be partners on the same journey. We will be the foremost and you will be the subsequent ones to successfully complete the community building of the journey of hope. May this year be a happy year for all of us, filled with actions, hopes, striving, and struggle that can bring happiness and joy to humanity's hearts, souls, and minds. Thank you very much. To conclude, any public figure, any humanitarian for worker, any social worker, anyone dealing with the public has or have to put his account before citizens, before communities, before public. Nothing, none of us above being questioned. And tell your leaders, tell your boss, tell your director, Tell everyone that you must be accountable not only for God, but for everybody that asks you what have you been doing during your leadership time. So it's not something that somebody like me is doing it to make you happy or to score points. It's a duty. It's a duty because the people who pay the salaries of immunization humanitarian and social worker, and the poor, the elderly, the sick, the orphan, the widow. The, the people who love us more than we love ourselves. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I wish you happy, prosperous New Year. Uh, sorry for wearing this uh, clothes because it's very cold here and I thank our brother from Tunisia gave it to me a few years ago when I traveled to Tunisia and uh, I'm still having it as a good memory from the people of Tunisia. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All the best for you. Happy New Year and stay home. Don't go out because a lot of things may be happening at night, unfortunately, especially if you are in different parts. Yeah, in a different parts of this world. Uh, see you maybe next week or after next week because we're still having a lot of things to do. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.